this is a tad crazy. Uh, so two months, <laughs> two months of neglect, and uh, this is what you get. Uh, put it in perspective, uh, you can see the height of my musket. Well, back in there is a smokehouse. It's about five feet tall, and it's up on about two feet of ground. But if I hold my musket up, you can see the height of those thistles over, <laughs> over there. And that's what we've, <laughs> we've come back to. So when we planted our garden this spring, which we normally maintain really well, uh, we, we mulched the whole thing deeply, irrigated it once, left for our road trip and crossed our fingers. And uh, I'm gonna head up there and see uh, <laughs> what survived, if anything. Uh, if, if it doesn't, uh, we, we, in order to fill our root cellar, because we rely on that for food and in our homestead, uh, we have a neighbor that's a market gardener, so we will buy bulk from him to fill the root cellar. But I'm optimistic <laughs> that maybe amongst all the weeds, my taters have grown. Anyway, uh, I got some work to do, that's for sure and for certain. Oh, and by the way, uh, I talked earlier about a fort build. Well, <laughs> the fort build's going on, and I've decided instead of building the fort independent of our homestead, we're gonna actually palisade the structures we've got for the most part. So over in this area, in the outhouse that you can't quite see, <laughs> or you can see the roof of it, is gonna be the first block house. And in the alternate corner um, behind the cabin by the blacksmith shop will be the second pal or the second block house. And, uh, yeah, I'll be cutting logs most of the winter and uh, starting some of the construction in the blockhouses. And next spring, uh, well, I'm optimistic some of my uh, historic friends will make the trek up here and perhaps help in the build. Anyway, I'm off to the garden to see what's, what's left of it. Okay, there's a few cobwebs in there, but um, we cleaned that out before we left and uh, we, we left the door open. It's all cleaned out, aerated, and I don't know whether we're gonna have enough produce to fill it this winter or not. <laughs> I'm off to the garden next. Um, we were lucky with the garlic. Uh, we had a neighbor come in and, and, and uh, snip off the scapes and uh, we harvested them the other day. They're drying out nicely and uh, we should have, I don't know, somewhere between four and 500 head of garlic, but the rest of the garden, well, <laughs> let's go see. I'm about to find out <laughs> how well a totally neglected garden does. One thing I've noticed, the potatoes are browning off, but um, we often struggle with, uh, with potato beetles, but there are none. So we, we help it somewhat by rotating the crops each year. We don't plant potatoes in the same area that we would have planted them the previous year, so that's helped. And I don't know whether it was all the water we got this year or, or what, but let's see. <laughs> Let's see how the potato crop turned out. Okay, they're not as big as they normally would be, but the um, interesting thing is, again, there were no potato bugs, so they grew well from that perspective. Lots of moisture. There's absolutely no blight on them. So we actually used uh, potatoes from last year's crop as seed potatoes for this year. 
you can do that a couple years and then you got to actually get some different seed potato but uh, or you'll end up with blight but these have no blight on them and we'll just see if the how the centers look if there's any rot and voila <laughs> winter's food right there uh, won't be quite as much, but we've got enough planted that we'll probably end up with five or six bushel to put in the root cellar. And uh, yeah, we're gonna eat this winter. <laughs> Kathy's been busy. She's out here uh, trying to find other crops we have in the garden. And uh, lo and behold, she found some beets. <laughs> Actually, they, they did better than I anticipated as well. Uh, so anyway, we're not, we're not gonna dig them. That guy's about that big around, but we want them for winter storage. So we're just gonna leave them and uh, yeah, we should have a bushel or so of beets by, by fall. Well, now off to the carrots. <laughs> And lo and behold, we have carrots as well. Uh, <laughs> again, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not gonna harvest them. This is our winter's food. And right now we're getting local produce from good friends of ours. But uh, we're gonna have some carrots, we're gonna have some beets. We're gonna have enough potatoes to see us through the winter. And uh, yeah, with any luck, a couple of deer and possibly part of a moose in the freezer this fall. The real fun part about uh, exploring a really neglected garden is the surprises. So there's a number of sunflowers that have taken hold and uh, I didn't plant them, <laughs> but Mother Nature did. And over here, have a look at my compost pile. Had to do some major scything <laughs> to find it. But inside, we got ourselves lots of potatoes. So that would have been uh, simply from uh, at planting season, we'd be throwing the, the potato peels and what have you. If, if one had an eye in it, well, it took. There's potatoes down in there. There's more potatoes here. And they're growing in rich, thick compost. They might be a tad bigger than the ones I just dig, uh, dug. Okay, I, I know there's potatoes in here somewhere. We're going to give them a little sun. Some of them haven't browned off yet, so that should help the, help the volume. So we planted whippets five years ago, and we should be getting apples this year, and sure enough, uh, this is, I don't know the variety, but it's one of the oldest apples in the earth. It's a, a Russian variety, and that's where apple trees come from, Siberia, I believe. So it looks like our winter cabbage survived after I found them. They're, they're gonna like having a wee bit of sun.